Hey guys, it's Shadow. Today we're going to be ranking every Civ based on their unique unit. So first of all we have the Jaguar Warrior. I quite like the Jaguar Warrior since the buff. Uh, it's still not the best unit in Castle Age, but it's still a lot better than it used to be. I'm going to place it in the C category as it has limited usages against infantry and is a little bit tankier now so you might see a little more usage of it. Uh, probably the more just going to be added to your army rather than uh, the bulk of your army most of the time. Next up we have the Berbers. Uh, Berbers are an easy S tier for me. I freaking love Camel Archers. They deal so well against uh, all other cavalry archers of course. Deal pretty well with cavalry, infantry, and most other archers as well they actually trade some okay with, with full upgrades as well. Next up we have the Hussite Wagon. I'm leaning towards an A or an S tier for this one. I think there are arguments for it to be S tier, but the problem with it is it's so expensive to mass with the wood cost being so high. And it's sort of awkward and clunky in terms of uh, using it against other units a lot of the time. But on something like Arena, it can definitely be quite useful. Um, on Arabia, I'd say it's just a little bit too slow uh, to be the bulk of your army most of the time. Next up, we have the Britain Longbowman. Uh, as a kid, I used to freaking love using these units. They're still uh, A tier for me, probably just above the Bohemians. You can see them uh, often used in Black Forest, uh, in team games and whatnot. It also can be like a super late game unit as well. And once you've got a big ball of Longbowmen, good luck cleaning those up. Next up we have the Bulgarians. The Conic... I really like this unit, it's going to be in the B tier. Uh, it just feels very underwhelming a lot of the time. It's very good against other knights, for example, against infantry, even does decently against halberdiers compared to other cavalry. The problem is that it just has that less pierce armor. Uh, and the when you're using cavalry, you kind of want to have that reliability factor of being able to kill archers. And then having to get all the castles and crepos up to then mass them as well uh, is a bit of a pain. Next up we have the Custelier. Uh, look, this unit can be really strong and it also can be very weak. I think against uh, low HP targets like, uh, let's go, skirmishers, uh, so to some extent archers, although archers can somewhat deal with them due to lower pierce armor. Uh, and uh, most infantry, they're very good because they're mostly one shot or two shot each of them with their charge attack. But against high HP targets, it's very tricky to use a Custilier because they have to a long time to recharge and their base attack is not that good. I'm going to place it in the B tier. I think it's just slightly behind the Conic. Now we have the Arambi. Now Arambi used to probably be one of my top like picks for unique units. Ever since they've been slightly changed, they're still pretty strong and they're very good against uh, clumps of units. Uh, but they do have a glaring weakness against archers. They're also not as good against buildings since the uh, Manipur cavalry change as well. So you can't just delete buildings in Imperial Age like you could before. I think they're probably... I'm going to put them in the A tier uh, below the Hussite Wagon. I still think they're really strong in certain situations. But against uh, lo lots of archers, you can be struggling with the around by. Now we have the Cataphract. If Cataphracts weren't so expensive to upgrade and then needing all the castles for them and everything else, they'd probably be like an A or an S tier unit. Combo is that they die to other heavy cavalry. They're slow to get all the upgrades for, and even though they do counter inventory, they do kill house quite decently. I think that it's not the best unit to use against the halberdiers, you'll eventually lose out in that trade in terms of cost efficiency. There's going to be a C tier just above the Jaguar Warrior. Now we have the Word Raider. They did get a bit of a buff in the previous patch, uh, a little bit extra attack during Castle Age. Uh, they're a great raiding unit, everything else about them kind of sucks all of the time. Uh, and then get having to get all the castles up for them, I'd rather go just the Celt Champions which are Basically, as uh, not as fast as Void Raiders, but basically faster than most other uh, infantry in the game. For me, it's going to be a C tier. Oh, well, that's hard. Below or above the Jaguar Warrior? I think the Void Raider has more case usage as a raiding unit than the Jaguar Warrior does. Now we have the Chukanu. 
This for me is either an S tier or an A tier unit. I feel like it's an A tier leaning towards an S tier unit. Basically, Chukunu Light Cab is one of the absolute strongest combinations you can get to with the Chinese. The Chukunu deal with basically everything. They kill Siege really quickly. You have to be a little bit careful against Siege Onages slow and Onages in general. Uh, they kill Cavalry pretty decently as long as they have some sort of meat shield. They kill other archers very quickly uh, as long as they have some sort of meat shield again. Uh, as they do have less range than a regular Arbalest. Uh, and even skirmishes, yes, the skirmishes outrange them and they don't do much damage against the skirmishes with, with each individual arrow. But those uh, multiple arrows do each do one damage as well. So they can be very decent there. Now we have the Kipchak. If it's if we're talking purely Castle Age, I feel like the Kipchak has potential to be like a B or an A T unit. But once we start talking Imperial Age as well, they do fall off quite significantly. Uh, and they feel very underwhelming all the time. I'm gonna place them in the C tier just above the Byzantines. Now we have the Shota Warrior. I've had so many times where I've tried going for some crazy strat with Ethiopians and the Shota Warriors. And I've probably already have succeeded once with Shota Warriors. They're very good against Eagle Warriors. Uh, and that's about it. Beyond that, they're probably pretty decent at raiding and sniping siege. Otherwise, a pretty bad unit leading towards the F tier. I do see some occasional usages for them, but I think it's too fringe to be making them a as a as your bulk of your army. Now we have the Frank's throwing axeman. In terms of design, this is an easy S tier for me. In terms of how it plays in AB2 currently, it's probably a B tier unit. Uh, I love using them. They're really good against infantry. They can be pretty decent against cavalry if they've got a bit of a pike or a health meat shield. Uh, and just in general, they're a very fun unit to use. Now we have the Haskell. Unless you're against melee units, they're an easy STTR units. And even against melee units, as long as you're mixing in the correct units, uh, champions against other champions and helps uh, against uh, cavalry, for example. These absolutely shred through everything. They're so hard to kill once they're in your economy as well. And being able to uh, create them from barracks after the unique tech is absolutely wonderful when you're playing as the Goths. It's kind of uh, the, one of the only things that makes Goths pretty strong. I'm going to even place it above the Camel Archer. Now we have the Tarkin. This is a, another one of my childhood favourites. I think... Uh, in terms of how they play in AB2 currently, they're not the best unit. They're only good against buildings uh, and archery units. Against cavalry, other heavy cavalry that is, they really do struggle against other infantry. Even champions can sort of uh, do okay against Tarkins due to them having a very low rate of fire, especially the champions are mixed in with pikes or halberdiers. Uh, the Tarkins do have very high HP and they can delete entire base of the face of the earth if you're not too careful though. I think they're probably a B or a C tier unit. I'm gonna put them just above the cataphract. Now we have the Kamiyuk. Kamiyuks are one of those units uh, that once you get them massed and once you get uh, Imperial Age and all the text for them, they are so hard to kill with anything. In Castle Age they are maybe a little bit underwhelming although they did get a buff in the previous patch as well. But uh, good luck killing a massive Kamuks once they've, they've already got them and they've got some siege behind it. I'm going to place them in the A tier. Now we have the Elephant Archer. It's slow, it's tanky, it's really hard to kill. But it has a very low DPS and getting the castles and the economy needed to support Elephant Archer production is a nightmare. Uh, and they are very underwhelming in terms of damage output especially. So. I can see them being a D tier one, but for the moment I'm gonna put them in the F tier. Now we have the Genoese Crossbowman. I actually really like this unit. Uh, it's great against infantry, it's great against cavalry. It absolutely sucks against other archers, though, uh, and siege especially. So it, it's kind of situational, but if you're against a cavalry civ, they are probably one of the strongest units. I'm going to place them in the B tier, probably just above the... This is a hard one. I think they probably have more of a usage than the Iconic. Now we have the Samurai. 
I love Samurai. They're such a fun unit to use. Uh, they unfortunately aren't very good against you uh, yeah, unless your opponent is going for uh, melee unique unit, for example. So that is one of the downsides of them because they do get the bonus damage, but they can be decent against other units as well, especially uh, other infantry. I'm going to place them in the C tier, just above both the Road Raider and the Jaguar Warrior. I think the biggest thing with infantry unique units is even after the buff, they just feel kind of underwhelming a lot of the time. Now we have the Ballista Elephant. <laughs> I really dislike the Ballista Elephant. I tried uh, going for them. They, they don't even need redemption to convert them. I was like, okay, I'm against mines. I'm going to make some Ballista Elephants and give them a bit of a go. And to my surprise, the mine player was converted and I was like, wait, mines don't get redemption. Uh, they're slow, they're hard to mass, they're expensive, they're expensive to upgrade. Uh, really not a unit I find much usage in, in most situations. War Wagons, on the other hand, though, are an absolutely fantastic unit. They're so hard to deal with. It's going to be an S tier. Uh, yes, Monks can sort of counter them. Uh, yes, they're kind of expensive to mass, similar to the Bohemian Hustlite Wagon. The difference is they're actually still pretty decently mobile. Uh, they ha don't have a highest uh, damage per second, but they do have a good damage output overall, uh, which does make them slightly susceptible to things such as how Ram pushes as the... Wagons can't really kill the rams very quickly. But beyond that, uh, you can't really kill them with scrams that easily as they tank a lot of hits. They don't really die to archers in the slightest, and even heavy cavalry can have a little bit of trouble killing them as well. Now we have the Elitists. If you'd asked me a few months ago before they got a bit of a buff, uh, I worry would have put them in the B tier. Nowadays I'm probably going to put them in the A tier, just below the uh, Aram buy. If you get to a... At least having two relics, if not four relics, with the Lithuanians, uh, and you're using the Letus, they absolutely destroy heavy cavalry. They do decently against archers if you are surrounding the archers, uh, especially if you're adding in some hussar, uh, some light cavalry, some winged hussar. They are fantastic against uh, infantry because they kill them very quickly, and siege they snipe in the matter of seconds. So I find them a very hard unit to counter, especially in team games, but they uh, they do still die to massed archers if you're using them as the only thing you're using. Now we have the Magia Hussar. This is another hard one to place, because it's not a power unit like a lot of these other ones, but it is the, pretty much the strongest trash unit in the game, uh, once you have the unique tech for it. I think I'm going to place it in the A tier... Uh, probably below the Thuanians, but above the Italians. Because once you get to a few castles and you're going for Magia Hussar and Heavy Cavalry Archer, usually as a composition, you can slap Siege very quickly with the Magia Hussar. They're nice and tanky, and the CA behind it are doing so much damage. So as a part of a unit composition, they're probably one of the strongest units. Uh, but on their own, they're not that powerful. Now we have the Malay Karambit Warrior. This is probably the best infantry unique unit. It's very hard to use correctly in my opinion, but the whole idea with them is just to overwhelm your opponent. Uh, you get to like 60 to 100 Karambit Warriors and your opponent gets caught off guard, especially with ranged units or infantry, and all of a sudden their entire army is dead. Uh, but if you move slightly too quickly and you don't uh, time it right, they are absolutely useless. They just die and the game is over. I'm gonna play some of the B tier just above the Genomese Crossbowman. Another one of my favorites is the Gavetto. In terms of its actual usage in the game, I think it's probably a C tier above the... probably above the Cataphract. It's very good against infantry, first of all. And it can be situationally good against some types of cavalry, especially if it, you have some sort of meat shield in front, because uh, they have such a high damage output. Uh, in terms of the survivability though, they do die even if the air breathes them pretty much, so that's the downside to using them. Now we have Plumes. I think they're a very strong unit. Maybe slightly overrated. I don't think they're as strong as some people make them out to be. They are hard to counter. The upgrade is uh, food and wood, which is definitely nice, although it's very high on both the food and the wood cost. Uh, for Elite, that is. 
I'm gonna place them in the eight here, just above the longbow. Maybe even slightly below. No, I think the longbow has a hard, you have a harder time massing longbows than you do plumes, because plumes are just so cheap. So it's gonna be the A tier. I think it's. I think so, a lot of other people would put them in the S tier. But I just think they're just slightly overrated uh, compared to some other things. They do very well against infantry, and they can sort of run away against some types of cavalry uh, more easily than other archers, but they also do have one less base damage, which means that they sort of struggle to. Kill it, especially things like Paladin. Now we have the Mangadai, easy S tier unit. Even after they've been nerfed a few times, they're just such a strong unit. You can't really kill them with Siege, you can't really kill them with uh, Cavalry, uh, you can't really kill them with Inventory in the slightest, unless you've got some Huskulls. Uh, maybe, I think even above the Goths, honestly. The only thing I find that they sometimes struggle against is like our Alp, especially if you've got Hussar in front. Uh, and then you just mix in some skirmishes, and then you're pretty okay against that. Now we have the War Elephant. In terms of how fun it is to use, it's an S tier or A tier, you know. In terms of every game usage, it's probably a D or an F tier. They're slow, they're hard to mass, they're super expensive. That being said, if you have 60 War Elephants, or let's even go 50 War Elephants, there is nothing that can kill that army very quickly. You can push so many buildings down. I think they have a decent case usage in uh, some team game scenarios, especially uh, if you get to boom very heavily into them. Uh, Ubok, on the other hand, they're really hard to place right now. I'm going to place them in the S tier with the reservation of moving down to the A tier. They kill other infantry very quickly. They kill cavalry somewhat decently as well, uh, especially if, you have, if you're mixing in the Ubok with some other unit. They're kind of like a support unit, they're not really meant to be... I mean, they are the bulk of your army, but they're not really meant to be the only unit you create when you're playing the poles. Unlike some like, let's go, uh, war wagons to a much bigger extent, you'll most often see the war wagons being the bulk of the army, and not a whole lot else. Whereas when you're playing with Ubok, you kind of want a secondary unit, either some Cavalier, uh, or some Winged Hussar, or some Arbalest. But they fill that role so well, they're super tanky. Uh, they even have two base pierce armor, which is really insane for infantry standards. Uh, and then being able to take your opponent's armor off. And the fact that this is all kind of all in one. The poles also do get the stone for gold bonus and an amazing economy behind everything else. Uh, and the Ubok is pretty cheap as well when you consider the gold cost is only, I believe, 20 or 25 gold per unit. Uh, they did receive a little bit of a nerf so they don't train as quick as they used to, but they still train pretty quick as well. Uh, next is the Portuguese. Organ guns are probably an S tier unit as well. They like they don't really die to anything in Castle except for defensive buildings. Like you can make a mass of mangonels uh, or a really big mass of knights does clean them up as well. But if you're playing uh let's just say a if without redemption and without uh, Onager, good luck dealing, or without Onager and BBC, good luck dealing with the organ guns. And even regular Onager feels somewhat underwhelming against the organ guns. Uh, you kind of need Siege Onager. Meme Lukes are another one of my personal favorites. In terms of a list like this, like they probably belong in the C tier, uh, just below the humans. They're a very strong unit, but the problem is that they're extremely expensive on a unit by unit basis. Uh, and they die kind of hard, surprisingly, to camels. Uh, and they even they die to arbs. They also have they struggle against skirmishes once they're massed enough. Of course, if you're making mamelukes, you will most likely have like a hussar meat shield as well. But it's just things to consider when they're 85 gold a pop as well. Uh, of course, Saracens can get to that point a little bit more easily due to the market bonus, uh, buying and selling resources. But very tricky to get to that point. Next up, we have these Sicilians. Sergeants, to me, feel, on their own, somewhat underwhelming. But when you consider the First Crusade as well, and the Sicilians' uh, other bonuses, and the fact that you can make them out of donjons, which means you can train them more easily, I think they lean towards a C tier unit. Uh, they're strong against other infantry. They can be tanky enough against archers. They can go for, like, a, don a sergeant and seed composition, which can be very hard to kill. 
Uh, but I'd much rather just go for a Halberd Cavalier against any non Halb Civ. Now we have the Boyars. I feel like some people are gonna hate me for this, but it's gonna be a D tier unit for me. They just. They don't really fulfill any role that fantastically. They're very good against other cavalry and infantry, but they die extremely hard to halves. Uh, they don't do well against uh, archers. Like, they do now have an extra pierce number, which does help with it a little bit. But archers can just kind of kite them, especially if they have a bit of a half meat shield. Uh, they also can be very much weak against cavalry archers as well, due to a similar reason, but even worse because the cav archers are mobil have uh, good mobility. And they're just kind of underwhelming a lot of the time. I'd rather be going for a halb siege composition of slabs in the late game most of the time. Uh, but against certain civs that don't have uh, halberdier uh, or good archers, it, it can be situationally decent. Now we have the Conquistador. In Castle Age, this is like S tier, even above the Mangudai. In Imperial Age, they're kind of like an A or a B tier unit. But I think because of the way in which you use the Conquistador and the power spike you get with them, they're going to be an S tier unit for me, possibly even above the Ubok here. Because uh, they can kill any, uh, basically any unit during Castle Age. They're very hard to kill. They're quite tanky. They're good. They have uh, two base pierce armor, uh, which is the same as a knight. They have high DPS. Uh, and they are very good at raiding as well. You, as a reason you often see FC into Conquistadors uh, on things like Arena or even Drush FC into Conquistadors on more open maps, which isn't as much the case since they open up Arabia. Next up is the Keshik. This is to me a solid B tier unit. Uh, it's very tanky, very uh, strong against archers. Uh, we're probably going to place above the Karamit Warrior. They do generate a bit of the gold back, they're very cheap to create. Uh, but a lot of the time I'd be rather I'd rather go for a heavy cav archer and hussar composition as the Tars. It's not like an a unit that you identify the Tatars by. But if you do get to a massive, then they can be quite good against a lot of other units. Uh, especially other infantry. And even against heavy cavalry, it's not so much that they lose badly. It's more just that. Uh, it's harder to get the mass of them going. And they do have a uh, lower attack as well. Teutonic Knights are a very fun unit to use. Uh, they're very slow, but they are obviously quite good against cavalry due to their uh, high, high armor. Very good against infantry. They just really suck against archers, uh, siege, uh, and some of the and buildings are very good against but they have to get in range of them first against certain civs they're like borderline broken against most civs though they are very underwhelming are they gonna be a c tier unit just above the Arkans, which make that makes me want to move the malians off a little bit actually because i feel like the gabello has actually no i kind of think the teutonic knight has better usages than the gabello most of the time next up is the turks Denisaries are just full on broken in Castle Age. They're, they're, like, they're like Conquistadors, but even worse. The only upside to Conquistadors over the Denisaries is they have more mobility. Uh, for me, they are an S tier unit, probably above the Portuguese, but below the Koreans, as they're nowhere near as scalable in Imperial Age. Retard Archers are probably one of my absolute favorite units. They destroy other archers. They're tanky so against uh, range units, uh, against all range units, but even against skirms, they're not that bad against them. Uh, so especially civs that don't have good skirms, I can deal with those. They're good against infantry, and they're good against uh, cavalry, as they do have one extra damage. You do need a meat shield for them, and again, similar to other castle units, you do need to get the right number of castles for them. But I actually find them to be a better unit than the Longbow. There's actually a bit of a grouping of archery units in the high A tier. Uh, my favorite would be the... Actually, you know what? I even think above the Plumed Archer. But I think Chukunu are stronger as they have a higher DPS. Now, last of all, we have the Vikings. I love the Berserk. Before this patch, I probably would have put them in the D tier. It's a little bit underwhelming. Uh, but in the current balance, after they did receive an extra 3 attack in uh, Castle Age, and now having even more HP during Castle Age, 
I think they're probably a C tier unit. They are probably bordering on the D tier, uh, but uh, they're very quick. They're very good against. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I think they're probably better than Jaguar Warriors at bare minimum, and probably better than the Wood Raider. In fact, the, I'm honestly tempted to put the Jaguar back into the D tier. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's more justified. I think the Viking was like, uh, is a lot stronger. And the, the problem with the Jaguar Warriors is the, like, they're now slightly more tankier in Castle Age, but they're kind of underwhelming otherwise. And the best thing about Viking Berserks is once you get Chieftains, they deal with cavalry really easily. And they're also kind of scary when you're playing archers as well, as they move so quickly and you need to make sure you're kiting them. And that's going to do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and I'll see you next time.